this is usually where I find Eugenio. Eugenio! That's my toad, Eugenio! <laughs> ay, ay, ay! I made a mistake. What we got going on here today is this is my front porch and back and side patio. So what I asked Efron to do, we're pouring all this concrete. Remember, underneath here is a storage room. There's a gun safe, and under that is a garage. But we want the top to make it look real pretty. So he's gonna come back later today and he'll put like a stamp on top of this so it doesn't look smooth. So I'll keep you posted on that. That's gonna be a really nice look. So earlier, thank God we had the Bobcat on site. He was able to, I was wondering what he was doing. We had the bucket up, pushing up against all that material, the lumber, to keep it from blowing out because there's so much weight and pressure with the concrete. He got it solved, but now we have a little bit of bow. So if we pull the forms out, what we don't want to see is a little bow in the leading edge of the concrete. So once this guy moves his truck, he's got a little engine trouble too. Seems like everybody's got a little situation happening today. Welcome to the job site. So he's got that working. He'll get his pump all cleaned out. Once he's out of here, we'll bring the Bobcat around and Efron will start pushing up against this and hold it in place while the concrete cures. So another thing that went on today is uh, when we talked about the geothermal wells with the AC and what the requirements are, we were one well short after we did the math. So these guys are back for a second time, putting in a fifth well. So do-overs are kind of a pain in the butt, but at least we're catching them early. That's just what construction is. It's constantly managing what could go wrong and make sure there's not a problem that has been created that sneaks up on us later on. This is usually where I find Eugenio. Eugenio! Nope, not here. Plenty of paper though, we're in good shape. All right, guys, we're uh, putting on all the James Hardy siding and this extra nice trim, which really defines the windows. But what's real important, it's all about keeping the water from getting into the house. So what Eugenio's doing, as he puts these trim boards on, right now we're over the top of the garage, you can see this metal flashing. So right now, it may not look that good, but at the end, it all gets painted. And here's what it looks like up above when the siding, because there'll be siding coming over it, and you do not caulk under here. The finished product, once the siding goes down, it hides the back part of the flashing, which only exposes the top edge. But it's real important, once the painters show up, we only caulk these areas. You don't caulk here, because if water gets in, you don't want to seal it inside. You want to leave this open so the water can get out. Those are little tricks that the caulkers and the painters need to know. It'll look really nice, and this little metal flashing will go away once it's all painted. You'll never know it's there, but it's extremely important to have.
gonna go check on Eugenio, see what he's up to. Hola, Eugenio. Hola. So what are we working on today? Are you ripping? My, these are my, are this my columns? Yeah. No, no, that's my cross support. This is a fascia. Oh, we're gonna go at an angle over the yeah. front door. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my front door has this called a gable. And then uh, we're gonna put this. Did you cut that in half? Yeah. Oh, he's very resourceful. I was gonna go back, take him back. I think we found out why I can't take him back. So you're gonna make something. So we took a 12 by 12 and made it a... 10 by 10. It's just 10 by 10. Oh, that's a 10? Oh yeah, 10 by 10s, yeah, okay. 10 by 10. So now it's a 10 by I'm five. Feel, I'm feeling that's good. When I finish, that's exactly. That's gonna look good. Yeah, looks Eugenio good. said, yeah. what I would came up with was no good, you said. Yeah, see, he doesn't, he, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say nothing. You don't say, yeah, the face, the face Nick says it all. Nick. No, your expression says, that Brad the Builder, he knows nothing. All right, so now you've cut this with my chainsaw. How do you, how do you get this? Hmm? You, you chip this away? See, it's not even? No, it's not even. So what, what do you... make a score. How do you do that? What are you using? No, that's a square. That's my toad, Eugenio! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I'm no. kidding. No, it wasn't. That's okay. So you get this up, and then you took the chainsaw down the middle. So right here, how, how, what, what happened on here? So I'm going to cut it with the but, chainsaw. What, with I'm the gonna, chainsaw again? And later, I'm going to pass my towel and make smooth. Oh, and then you, I saw um, Daniel out here smoothing it all down. So we liked a little bit of a rough, but you're just taking some of the rough stuff off so it looks nice, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so now Eugenio's going to make the house look nice the finishing little detailed touches is what goes a long way like the columns we see at flair's house eugenio did all those most of them and there's some of those we we took a picture right so they're so nice <laughs> yeah, so by no. the way you guys we still have some more hats they're not as dirty as eugenio i need more so I have hold on one. Wait. yeah i got some new hats coming so if you want them if your eugenio's warm you can get five dollars off but if you want a clean one you have to pay full price <laughs> he won't give up his hat sorry that was a test all right show me uh so we got the stone on someone else is doing stone so eugenio got all the siding done on the house so now we're waiting for the caulkers to come in and caulk everything we gotta get the stone on which they're doing right now they started yesterday look how far they got the whole front done and uh once they're done then we bring the caulkers in then we can paint the house painting on Yes. When you move. When do I, you sound like my wife. What do you mean, when do I move here? Uh, wait, when it's done. When it's done, Eugenio. So hopefully by September. That's September? that's three months. This is May, June, July, August. Well, maybe uh, end of August. October. You don't, you, October? Yeah. You don't think I'll be done by September? No. Like, <laughs> so I'm going to put you back on the job. You got to, no more breaks, no more. It, Cinco de Mayo's not coming up anytime soon, is it? But Monday. Monday. Is Monday. A, Monday is a big day. It's like, Nobody working. Oh, yeah, yeah. Monday's Memorial Day. That's another Cinco de Mayo for Eugenio. I won't see him on Tuesday. He'll be in no condition. You better be here Tuesday, Eugenio. No, no dinero for you. Ah, uh, make a crying now. I need money. Uh, he, he, he drives a Escalade. He's got plenty of money. So just yesterday, there was nothing going on here. And just that quick, they came in, got the scratch coat on. You can see how they put the netting down here. We built this up. This is actually framing and that's my foundation i had to build it up because below here is the storage room and under the front stoop is uh, my son max's closet we want to make sure this all gets waterproof that's what the black is and then they put this concrete material in the back this mesh is called the scratch coat that way when they put the stone on it has something to grip to so all that has what you see here was put on there yesterday and just that quick you can see up above where they've stopped they put the corners on and then they fill in in between there. So I made a mistake. I went and got a front door on sale and the frame, which is the most expensive part, I can't find a door to fit in it as luck would have it. They changed something. So now tomorrow we're tearing out the entire front door, the frame and all, putting in a new one. So every time I take a shortcut to save money, it never seems to work out. So the guys can't finish until I get the new front door in. So they're over here working on the chimney. So Eric, my metal guy, He's fantastic. So how do I get those great big 11 by 11 cedar? No, they're actually 10 by 10. 10 by 10 cedar columns have to go in here. I didn't think this through too well because the columns are this tall going up. I can't tip it in there and move it over. So we have to come in. We're gonna cut this plate out and then slide the column in. This gets bolted. 
See the holes here? This will get bolted to the concrete. The column will then slide in and will bolt through all the sides and put this plate back on. So it, it is actually holding the column down. And then I need a support at the top. So in construction, not only you have to worry about the force of it coming down, which is what this is holding, but you have to worry about the wind, the lift. That's just as important on these windy days. You could get this front porch could lift up and cause damage. So I'm bolting at the top and the bottom so there's no uplift and we have the down lift doesn't kick out. So that's what we're doing in theory. All right, so now I'm gonna take you inside. Just uh, about four or five days ago, Nate had this thing swept out, spotless, looking great, getting ready for the drywallers. Look and see what that looks like now. It's a little embarrassing. Typically, when homeowners see this, they tend to freak out, but this is what drywall stage looks like when you're hanging. This is what progress looks like. They are hanging the drywall. They just throw it down, cut pieces, dirt and dust everywhere. Let me show you on this side what we're doing. <clears throat> My wife came up with this idea. So we're trying to do some new things. We've never seen this before. Let me know what you guys think. So at the fireplace, we're gonna have some precast stone around here. We were gonna run the stone all the way up, which is traditionally what people do. We're gonna leave that drywall and take what stone would go here, and we're gonna put it on this wall all the way up and around the door on both sides. So let me know if you guys think that's a good idea or not. I've never seen it. I'm willing to try new stuff. I think it would look nice when you stand back seeing stone on both sides. That would be an accent color with the TV above it and then a stone surround on the fireplace. I think it would look cool, but I'd like to hear your opinion. So you guys are cousins? Yeah. Oh, okay. These guys, no, these guys too? Hell cousins? Wow. Well, family. Oh, there's all family. You guys work well together. No, no fighting? No, no. Sometimes, <laughs> You're too busy. Sometimes, you know, all the, the family is the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes, fine, you know. Well, you guys are, appreciate your hard work. Does he have gray hair or is that the, is that the dust? Yeah, that looks good. Looks He's got, much, yeah. well, Lisi, look at the hair. I have none. It's starting to go. Show him your hair. No, no hair. Yeah, see, no. Yeah, there's no hair there, too. You guys have nice hair. I have it on my back. That's not good. Have you been down to see the camel? We've been walked down there to see the camel ever? No. You get a chance if you're up for it. It's, he's, he's friendly. Great big, sitting right on the other side, right right down the bottom of the hill, yeah. It's Miamo Ralph. Yeah. Until my front door shows up, they've got all the stone laid out here. They lay it all down. I'm glad to see they put down uh, plywood and tar paper because this is a pre-stamp finished concrete floor. So we're trying to protect it as much as possible. I was trying to save some money, but I think it's going to look way better if I go ahead and take this stone all the way up. So you can see what the scratch coat process is. They've gone this far. They had to go get a ladder. They're coming back. They're gonna have to finish. So Jose's the main man running the show. He's got all, these guys are all related and they get along great. But I wanna know who's gonna clean up this mess, Jose? Uh, the, right there, the last guy that showed yeah, up today. The, the, the Did you know? Yeah, the Does young he, guy. The young guy, oh, the young guy always yeah. gets the job. <laughs> yeah. That's smart. So it's called lear the learning the hard way, right? Earning yeah. your way up the ropes. No, you guys did this house in three days hanging out. Yeah, yeah, very good. I appreciate your hard work. Jose, thank you, amigo. Yeah, thank All you. right. So here's some stuff planning ahead when you're putting stone versus siding. So the stone is about an inch and a half to two inches thick. So I had Eugenio come in and double up this James Hardy trim board. So he took these trim boards, it's a little bigger, and he cut two of them to get the depth out because this is the back of the fireplace. This is the vent for the fireplace because it's wood burning. You have to have air coming in to allow the fireplace to draw. So when you see this big box that's sticking out, looks funny, but once the stone goes on, it's gonna be flush. Those are little details that are important to make the house look finished in the end. All right, so the next thing that we'll do that nobody really pays attention to until your house leaks, my caulk guy will come in, he'll caulk every one of these joints. Remember, we don't caulk these little flashing areas, but we'll caulk all the way down here all these sides, all these joints, and that caulk we use, it's a Vulcan, and it takes about seven to 10 days to dry. It's very sticky, it's great. Once that dries, we'll come in and start painting the house, and we'll have you guys help us with the paint color, because we'll put several different samples on to figure out which color. Remember flares, we had about, there's like 50 colors of white. We're gonna go with a earthy color. I don't know, you tell us what color you think is gonna look good. My wife has her ideas, but I have none, so. Let me know on that, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you guys on the next job site.